Hello, my name is Dr. Getty Chimeka Anyamoke. I am an infectious disease specialist and I practice in Baton Rouge and Gonzales, Louisiana. This is another update on Coronavirus Disease 2019, also known as COVID-19. At this time, we are doing a series of videos to include COVID-19 testing. This is part one of SARS-CoV-2 diagnostics and interpretation. As the pandemic of coronavirus disease 2019, also known as COVID-19, continues to affect much of the world, we know that it spreads from person to person through respiratory droplets and sometimes from touching virus contaminated surfaces. These respiratory droplets can be produced when an infected person coughs, sneezes, or talks and can in turn infect another person when the droplets get on their mouth, nose, or eyes. When a person becomes symptomatic or is exposed to COVID-19, a lot of times we need to test that person for diagnosis. This video is meant to explain what we are testing for in those COVID-19 tests. We have three types of COVID-19 tests. They are the reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction, also known as RT-PCR. Two, the serology test, also known as the antibody test. And three, the antigen test. As at the time of making this video, the knowledge of diagnostic tests for COVID-19 is still evolving. And so it is very important that we understand the nature of the diagnostic text and interpretation. In a well-explained article in JAMA, the detection of viral RNA by RT-PCR by far the most commonly used and reliable test for diagnosis of COVID-19. The test, performed using nasopharyngeal swabs or other upper respiratory tract specimens, including throat swab, tracheal aspirate, bronchial alveolar lavage, or more recently, saliva. Different manufacturers use different RNA gene targets, with most targets targeting one or more of the following areas on the virus. 1. The envelope. 2. Nucleocapsid. 3. Spike. 4. RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. And 5. ORF1 genes. The sensitivities of the tests to individual genes are comparable according to comparison studies except the RDRP SARS-R primer probe, which has a slightly lower sensitivity, likely due to a mismatch in the reverse primer. In most individuals with symptomatic COVID-19 infection, viral RNA in the nasopharynx swab is measured by the cycle threshold, which becomes detectable as early as day one of symptoms and peaks within the first week of symptom onset. The cycle threshold is the number of replication cycles required to produce a fluorescent signal with lower cycle threshold values representing the higher viral RNA loads. A cycle threshold value of less than 40 is clinically reported as PCR positive. This positivity starts to decline by week three and subsequently becomes undetectable. However, the cycle threshold values obtained in severely ill hospitalized patients are lower than the cycle threshold values of mild cases and PCR positivity may persist beyond three weeks after illness onset when most mild cases will yield a negative result. However, again, a positive PCR result reflects only the detection of viral RNA and does not necessarily indicate presence of viable virus. In some cases, 
Viral RNA has been detected in reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction, even beyond week 6 following the first positive test. A few cases have also been reported positive after two consecutive negative PCR tests performed 24 hours apart. It is unclear if this is a testing error, reinfection, or reactivation. The timeline of PCR positivity is different in specimens other than nasopharyngeal swab. PCR positivity declines more slowly in sputum and may still be positive after nasopharyngeal swabs are negative. In one study, PCR positivity in stool was observed in 55 of 96 infected patients, which amounts to 57%, and remained positive in stool beyond nasopharyngeal swab by a median of 4 to 11 days. But was unrelated to clinical severity. Persistence of PCR in sputum and stool was found to be similar as assessed by Wolfel et al. In a study of 205 patients with confirmed COVID-19 infection, the reverse transcriptase PCR positivity was highest in bronchial alveolar lavage specimens, which was 93%, followed by sputum, specimen which was 72 percent and nasal swab specimen which was 63 percent and then pharyngeal swab which was 32 percent false negative results mainly occurred due to inappropriate timing of sample collection in relation to illness onset and deficiency in sampling technique especially of nasopharyngeal swabs Specificity of most of the reverse transcripted polymerase chain reaction tests is 100% because the primer design is specific to the genome sequence of SARS-CoV-2. Occasional false positive results may occur due to technical errors and reagent contamination. In the next part of this video series, we will discuss the detection of antibodies and antigens to SARS-CoV-2. You can find my other videos on my YouTube channel at Wellness Care Incorporated. Again, I am Dr. Getty Chimeka Anyawonke, infectious disease specialist practicing in Baton Rouge and Gonzales, Louisiana.